This is Criteria. Welcome back to Criteria. I'm Thomas Miras. I'm here with my co-host, James Majewski. Hello, everyone. Hey. Uh, so we are here. Uh, we, we recently did a review of this new uh, documentary, Lourdes, that was released in France in 2019 and now just uh, coming out in the U.S. And now we are here for our, an interview. Actually, it's our first interview with uh, someone involved in in the making of a film that we've done on this podcast we've 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 talked with many people about films but never with someone who actually was involved with the making of the film that we uh we were discussing so today we have uh here with us the person who had the idea for this documentary and one of the writers 16 leon dufour welcome 16 thank you thanks for having me so uh 16 you are uh, primarily a journalist, correct? Yes, I'm still am. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I'm a journalist. And um, to tell you the story of this documentary, um, I was um, living in the US, actually, um, in New York for uh, almost a decade. Ah. And the first thing I did when I moved back to Paris in uh, 2016, 17, it's to work on this documentary because wh while I was in New York, um, I worked with uh, Thierry de Maizière and Alban Turlet, the two directors, on several subjects, and we became friends. And when I came back to France, um, I knew Lourdes. Uh, maybe I will explain it later. And um, I told them that maybe we had a subject there because um, it's a place that it's known all over the world, um, and especially in France. It brings millions of people every year, but we don't really know it. And when I say that, I mean, uh, you know, in the heart of Lourdes, which is, which was my purpose, is to sh was to show um, the very heart of the reactor, which is the sick people and the caregivers. Mm. Um, so that was a very, very beginning of the story. That was very much my experience of this film, you know, growing up as a, a young Catholic, going to Catholic school, I've of course heard about Lourdes, I've heard about the story. Um, I've known people who have gone to visit Lourdes, but I guess, you know, the way you've described it, this, this heart of L Lourdes that was not at all what I expected to see yeah. it coming into this film. Mm. And I was, right. yeah, very, very surprised in a good way. Um, so I think that you were successful on that end. But because, you know, so, Lourdes, Lourdes people, it's very different uh, going there uh, through uh, with a pilgrimage, uh, which will take you almost one week, okay? Um, and it's very different from going there just one day, you know, you go to the, the grotte, the grotto uh, to pray the Virgin and, and then, uh, and you miss, to me, you miss something really important. It's the relationship um, between the caregivers and the sick or disabled people, which is the very heart of Lord. It's, it's about love. It's about giving something. It's about poverty, it's about hope, you know, it's a lot of things. So when I thought about this movie, um, which has never been done before, um, usually you have, um, you know, some TV reports about uh, uh, the 15th of August, or you have uh, something about the, all the people who sell, you know, the, um, the statuette, the, the um, the medals, you know, all the, yeah. the, the business you have around Lourdes, but never, n never, 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 you, 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 you have seen something about what, what's going on inside for the people who, who goes to, to pilgrimage. So that was, um, our purpose. Hmm. And, and, you know, it, it was really funny because, um, 
uh, um, you mentioned them um, on your previous uh, podcast, a very good one, I must say. Um, Thierry and Alban, they are not religious at all, you know, the two directors, not at all. Um, but they are, they made several uh, documentaries, a very famous one, at least in Europe. Um, some of them are on Netflix. Um, the, the previous one just before Lord was about Rocco Sifredi, you know, the, the porn star. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 it was a, uh, an intel intellectual gap for them, you know, to, yeah. to, to go from wow. uh, Rocco Sifredi to Lord. But they are what we say, what we call in French portraitist, you know, they like to go, um, very deep in human condition, in stories, in people, and to, in order to understand them uh, a lot. So they said yes, a big yes, right away. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, so I uh, would normally wait until the end of the interview to ask this, yes. this practical question, but because we already did our review of the film, a lot of people have asked me, uh, practically speaking, where can they see this film in in the U.S.? Is, is there a way that people can find out where the film is playing? Well, um, yes, you have several uh, movie theaters in some cities, but from my understanding, uh, it depends on the numbers of spectators for the first two weeks, you know, and then it will be okay. released everywhere. So that's why we need a lot of uh, word of mouth. <laughs> I see. Um, is there, um, is there, uh, I've had people ask me specifically, how can we arrange for a screening of this or how can we bring this film to our community? Oh, it's very uh, is easy. there, is there a way to organize a screening, yes. even if there's no theater playing it? Definitely. It's very easy. Uh, I will put you in touch with our American distributor. Um, it's actually, it's what we did in, uh, in France, you know, w when the, the movie went out in, in France, you know, it's, it's not an easy subject to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how I know the U S but I'm not American as you can hear. Um, but in France, it was not an easy, it, it was a bet, a kind of bet, you know, uh, mm -hmm. um, bringing out, um, um, one hour and a half documentary on Lourdes, uh, it was a bet. So, um, it began very slowly, but the first day it was already a hit. And then all over mm. France, um, people, exactly like you said, um, um, asked for the movie and, you know, churches ask, ask for the movie to, right. to come in that town. And it's exactly what happened. So uh, is there a way, Can maybe we can put something in the description for this podcast where people can get in touch Yes, about exactly. uh, screenings. I will give okay, you. Okay, so we'll put an email address then, uh, or a, or a website link in, in the description, uh, one or the other, whatever whatever you tell us later. <laughs> yes, um, I'll tell you. Okay, great. So people can can look there in the show notes for this episode to find that information. So um, you yeah you mentioned um, uh, your background with Lords, can you tell us a little bit about your history with the place personally? Yes, of course, because I mean, uh, I, I'm a journalist, uh, so it's my job and Lord is my private life. Um, it began with my mother-in-law to be very honest, because I'm, I'm, I was born and raised Catholic. Um, I'm a spiritual person, uh, but I keep it very private. Um, but my mother-in-law uh, has a love story with Lourdes since 50 years, okay? Wow. And many, many years ago, uh, my kids were um, around 10, something like that, and their cousins also. And she asked us, I mean, me, my husband, and my brother-in-law, etc., uh, if she could bring our kids to Lourdes. And we said, why not? I mean, I don't know. And our kids, came back with stars in their eyes. They mm. were like overexcited saying that it was so great to help people and so on and so on. Okay. So they came back years after years and uh, 
And um, while my mother-in-law uh, turned 70, <laughs> I'm going to make you laugh, um, she struggled with many things in her life. And we wanted to give her something very special for her birthday. And I was looking for a very nice Chanel bag or, you know, a very nice Dior perfume or, you know, very... and the kids told us, but you are completely wrong. What she wants is that we all go to Lourdes and her two sons never, never, never have been to Lourdes in their whole life while her, their mother was spending more than one month every year to that place. So we said, what? Going to Lourdes? But what are you thinking? Are you crazy? At that time, we were in the US, living in the US. We only had two weeks of vacations. So the idea of spending one week in Lourdes <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead of going to, I don't know, a nice beach, we said, yeah. are you crazy? <laughs> but, you know, when they want something, <laughs> when when the sky wants something, uh, you you can't you can't fight. So mm. I remember us, um, you know, flying back from New York with all the luggages and, and and arrive at Lourdes, and it was our very first experience. It was six seven years ago, and it was um, a shock. It was a shock because. Um, all uh, the way you interact with um, sick people, with disabled people, you, you touch, you, you really touch um, um, the poverty, um, the simplicity, the, you know, sick people or disabled people, as you said very well in your previous podcast, uh, we don't want to see them really. I mean, uh, it's annoying. It's kind of annoying. And mm. and and when you arrive in Lourdes, you are here for for them and only for them. And the best advice uh, a priest gave me uh, is he told me, okay, you know what? It's your first day. You go to the grotte uh, to see the Virgin, and you said, okay all your little problems, you put them at uh, her feet. And from now, uh, once you gave all your problems, all your little strugglings uh, to the Virgin, uh, you can give 100% uh, of your time uh, to the sick and disabled people. And you, what I learned is that um, you come back richer um, than uh, just before you, you you go to the to this place. It's it's wow. you receive so much. You receive so much joy, so much love, so much hope. Uh, yeah, it's it's really 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 shaky. You know, you 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 come back really differently. It was a no-brainer for us once we left uh, Lourdes for the first time that we will come back and uh, we came back every year uh, to give one week wow. um, of, um, of our time. And honestly, it's nothing uh, in regard of how much you receive uh, back. It's just amazing. Mm. Now, this film follows a group of pilgrims mm. from their arrival at Lourdes to their departure. Is that one week? Is, is that a, a span of one week that uh, the film takes place during? Not exactly. Uh, mm. All of the pilgrimage uh, takes place during one week. Okay? Um, okay. But, you know, we spent almost six months uh, there and we followed, uh, at the end, we followed seven uh, pilgrimage, different pilgrimage mm. from, uh, from April to October, the last one. And um, it was different pilgrimages um, because while I was writing um, the, the scenario, uh, I wanted to, to offer um, 
the best uh, picture of what Lourdes is exactly. Uh, it, it not it it not only bring very religious people, you know, um, um, well mannered. Uh, you have everything. You have uh, the bikers pilgrimage. You have the firefighters pilgrimage. You have uh, the gypsies pilgrimage. You have everything. You know, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so we we chose uh, seven of them, and it was not an easy task. You know, uh, it was very uh, complicated, and um, it took me uh, almost um, six months to find uh, all the people. And um, and they they were not uh, together when we film them, right. um, so they don't know each other. Well, at that time, they didn't know each other, not at all. And what was this process like of, of deciding which stories to follow or groups to include in the <laughs> film? It was very complicated. Um, yeah. Okay. As I knew this place, which was really important, um, because you need to be an insider to... It, um, as we decided to, to make this movie, uh, and I think that it's, it's my, my real asset to the movie, is to be an insider. So I knew that you have so many different people. You have CEOs of big companies. You have uh, people who are struggling uh, by the end of the month because they have only $20 left, uh, you know, in the bank. Um, so I really wanted to have um, people from different backgrounds. So, um, and as you saw it, uh, for instance, we have prostitutes um, and it's the highlight of their year. It's mm. really the highlight of their year. And people didn't know that prostitutes had a pilgrimage, for instance, you know, and by that I wanted to show that it's a place for everyone. Um, while you are in front of the Holy Virgin, we are all the same. Uh, no matter um, how much money you have in your bank account or um, so it was a, a guideline for us, you know, to show um, this diversity and mm. a human, to, to, to go very deep in the human condition, you know, because at the end of the day, we are all um, full of hopes, uh, struggling also with some, you know, I don't know, whatever makes your life uh, problems or sadness or... And we are all the same. We are in the same poverty in front of the in front of the um, Holy Virgin. So that's why I try to have a full range of different people to show the diversity of this place. And how did you uh, go about explaining and convincing these people, some of these people, to kind of show their let you into these private moments, and particularly to say their prayers, prayers. out loud? Um, it's a very good question. Um, we didn't want to have voiceovers, uh, yes. as maybe yeah. you have noticed, because, um, yeah. well, we didn't want to. But uh, what is more intimate than a prayer, you know? And they were praying, but in their heart. And at some point, we asked them, and especially, you know, the father, uh, Patrick, of the, these two little boys, um we asked him do you we are deeply sorry but do you mind saying your prayer out loud and he said a big yes and i think wow it changed everything in the movie wow yeah because you go and we said we thought we thought his prayer was the the most <laughs> <laughs> not to like judge people's prayers but i thought his prayer was like the the most it, f it felt the most like a prayer, like a real, yes. this is what prayer is. This is what prayer should be. Yes, because he's so, you know, it's really hard for them. Um, 
they have two boys. Uh, the little one uh, who stays at home is with a, a fatal condition. Um, he has um, a disease which is called, uh, called the uh, epidermi, epidermolis bulleuse in French. It, it gives you blisters everywhere in the skin, you know, in the mouth, in the eyes, in, okay. Um, and uh, Jean-Baptiste, uh, who is the one uh, with uh, whom he goes to Lourdes, um, has another, it's a genetic uh, disease. It's not fatal, but um, it's quite complicated for them. And Patrick is so moving, you know, he's a military guy. Um, he's very, you know, strong, straight, um, um, like a guy who is in the army, you know? So um, he was really moving because when we filmed him, uh, he he was so much in pain. You know, he was he was he was asking for everything. He was um, nothing was more important than his two sons, and and I think that um, we we succeeded in in showing it. And um, yeah, and you said this this move to ask one person to pray out loud you said this changed everything Can everything you expand on that a little bit yes because again it was what is more intimate than a prayer you know you can follow um people filming them uh, going to the procession or you know organizing their pilgrimage or but what is really inside their heart they could tell us their story and their story was really moving anyway. I mean, but we wanted to go deeper. What, again, what brings millions of people to Lourdes? It, 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 it stands in, in the bottom of your, of your heart. So that's why at some point we understood that we needed to ask them to pray out loud in order for the mm. people to understand better uh what uh where their hopes or their yeah. their struggles or yeah yeah well it's like it's interesting because you know when you go to lords you you talk about being in front of the virgin but you're obviously not seeing her you're not seeing her like bernadette did uh so you're dealing with two invisible things right that's the human heart and the prayers that people are saying and the blessed virgin herself and you can't just ask her to make herself visible for a film uh so you can at least ask the people to make their prayers yeah. <laughs> audible and then you get one part of the invisible reality that is at lords of yeah sure of course um we wanted to ask about uh the the role of a writer in a documentary and i'm sure that this varies from project to project i know this is your first documentary you've written um but uh what does it mean when you say you you wrote this documentary i mean how how can a documentary have have writers it's all yeah. it's all real life <laughs> well i was the 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 writer uh, i mean the author and the editor as well so um, oh, okay. um well, in France, I don't know how it works in the U.S., but it's um, when you for the, when you work for the cinema, you need to write a kind of scenario because you can't just show up, and especially in a place like that, with your right. camera saying, "Hey, you, how are you? Can I film you?" I mean, no, no, <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that. So, and. Um, and and to sell the, the the movie before you know to to work because we 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 went to see some uh, producers and and to get some money to to help uh, us to make the movie uh, we needed to write the story and um, that's where um, I had uh, you know my value because I knew uh, what kind of pil pilgrimage we could uh, we could have uh, what kind of stories and uh, what kind of narrative we could um, we could uh, have also. And uh, yes, you need to write it a little bit before because mm -hmm. um, 
especially when uh, you make a kind of uh, eruption, you know, in people's life and uh, when they are um, living, you know, they are going through kind of struggles, you, you can't just show, show up with your camera, it's not possible. So we spend time together uh, with them before Okay. And uh, we made sure that um, they were okay with that. Um, and that's where the writing um, appears. I see. So <laughs> what form does the, does the writing take? You're not necessarily writing lines for people. No, not uh, at all. So, no. so what, what kind of like, if I were to look at it on the page, mm. you know, let, let's say I were to read five pages of this script, of this writing, what, what, what would be in it? Uh, very good question. Um, first of all, I wrote a, a synopsis, you know, a, a pitch um, on two right. pages to explain uh, exactly what uh, Lourdes is and what we wanted to film and uh, um, what these people um, want to find in this place. And it's not miracles. It's not miracles. It's very important to say. Um, and then I wrote um, a very long scenario, you know, um, uh, but knowing that uh, exactly as you said, that people won't follow the lines because it's not written, I mean, the lines were not written, they, they are talking with their heart. So, uh, but I knew their story before. So it was easy, it was easier for me, you know, to, to write a kind of things and then they could say whatever they wanted. But, uh, but I knew, uh, uh, Patrick and Laetitia uh, had uh, these uh, problems with their sons. I knew Isidore, the prostitute, the, the, uh, what was his story, etc. etc. So I wrote a scenario like, like exactly for the, for the cinema. So it would say, you know, we're going to see them uh, in their room uh, getting ready to go or you know, we're going to see the part where they arrive and they're touching the rock, uh, yes. things like that. Yes, but you know, the, the difficult part is that Lourdes is a very small place, um, hmm. an ugly one. <laughs> it's not very charming. Hmm. Um, and it was very difficult because uh, it's always the same. You take the train or the bus, you arrive, um, all the people are in the same place. You have two medical places where they can stay. Uh, and then every day you have processions, you have um, La Grotte, you have uh, masses, you have, but it's always the same. So we try to, to think about it uh, like um, a choral film. I don't know if uh, it works in English. Un film choral. It's like, you know, when people are... Um, Ensemble? Yeah, going to the same place, like, like a journey, you know? Oh, so, so we knew that we would have um, repetitions, like, uh, like the churches, like the processions, like, so, so, voilà. I see. Okay, so um, you're writing this film, uh, you're working with these directors. Uh, were you on set during yes. the filming yes. or on location, <laughs> I should say? Um, yes. And what, what uh, once the scenarios had been written, what role did you play on location? Was it, was it uh, helpful since you had spent time there? Uh, did you have like an in with the people who are in charge of Lourdes to allow you access to certain places, things like that? Um, yes, um, but you know, it, it, we needed to have all the authorizations before and that's um, where um, I had my role to play because uh, as you can imagine, uh, Lourdes doesn't give you um, all the authorizations like that. Uh, yeah. You need to know the place. Um, uh, and, 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 and it you seemed know, like it seemed that Lord in this film gave you pretty uh, yes. open access 
And so I, I was totally. I, I was interested in asking you what it was like working with the institution and how they accommodated the shooting. Totally, you are absolutely right. And again, it was a bet for them because mm. uh, when I called them the first time uh, saying that, okay, I'm 16 Leon Dufour, even though I have a, an uncle who was a, a priest, uh, Jesuit, um, quite famous um, in France. And, and uh, so my name helped. Wow. Um, um, it was not easy to say, okay, I'm 16 Leon Dufour, I'm here with these two directors, we want to make a movie, and you know what? Their previous documentary was about a porn star. Can you imagine? Right. Yeah. But what I can say is that they said a big yes, and it was just incredible, and they were so open-minded, and it was a bet. I mean, it's not easy. They trusted us very easily. And among um, the difficult authorizations was to get the one to film, um, to shoot inside the um, les piscines, um, the sanctuary bass. Mm. Yes. You, right. you see? It has never, never been allowed before. Never. Wow. That, that was some of the most striking footage in the documentary. Mm. And they said yeah. yes, and they said yes without no discussion. And the, what do you think was... was different this time with your project as opposed to possible projects in the past? That they understood that um, two many things. Thierry de Maizière and Alban Turley are great, great, great portraitists. You know, mm. so they, they they know very well to go deep inside the stories. First thing. Second thing, I knew the place very well. I, I'm a caregiver as well. I'm a volunteer. Um, so they trusted me because they knew that I wouldn't betray uh, Lord and the people who come um, into pilgrimage. Because you know, it was a, it was a, it was an issue, uh, and I always kept in mind that I didn't want to betray or to mock people you know that go there not mm. at all and i think they understood um early on that um, our intentions were really uh, to understand to 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 give the world an inside look of what is really happening there yes so since you were on set um and I know you were the writer, not the cinematographer, but I was curious, since you were there witnessing the film, and can you speak at all about um, the visual approach they took? Because the film does have a pretty distinctive look and style. We remarked in our review of the, of how mm. precisely it's shot. Uh, can you say anything about, did, did they talk about uh, how they decided the, the look of it was going to be? or how they decided to kind of motivate the shots or anything? This is really the work of Alban Torlet. Um, one of the two directors, uh, he has a very specific touch with his camera. Uh, he loves um, close looks, uh, and especially he's the one who had the idea, you know, with all the hands touching the rocks, yes. uh, which is incredible because just these few minutes of people touching the rocks, you can see the diversity of this place. You see young hands, old hands, black hands, uh, you know, everything. And yes. it's right away, it gives you a glimpse of what is happening there. And this is really the work of Alban. And um, one of the difficulties we had, uh, and I will answer your two question in, in, in one answer is, is that um, for, for instance, it was, as you can imagine, very difficult to film the people while the caregivers are uh, giving them giving them their shower. Okay, mm, right. How, how do you do? How do you do? It's not easy. It's very intrusive. Yes. But at the same time, it's really important to under for the people to understand that all the volunteers who go there, they are not trained nurses. Uh, they are just caregivers uh, and um, 
and you know sometimes they are you know clumsy sometimes you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, but we wanted to show it, to, to, to film that. So um, Alban, uh, he was alone in the bathroom, for instance, you know, just with the camera, the guy with the um, uh, ingénieur du son, how do you say that? You know, the guys who, uh, the sound, who makes the sound. Yeah. Okay, he was right. outside the bathroom and Alban was alone in, inside and I made sure he didn't film any naked parts, you know, of the people and, and, and he did it. And it was the first time. It was mm. the first time you never saw yeah. something like that about law. So I yeah, was, was there. Tastefully done. Yeah. I was there, you know, to, to, for everything to, to make wow. sure that the interviews uh, were going well, to help them to film, to see, ah, I wow. saw that in that place, we need to rush and to go there. And especially for the, the PME, it's the International uh, Military Pilgrimage. Um, it's, it gathers, I don't know, I think it's 6,000 people from all over wow. the world. So we were, you know, running all the day to try to catch, uh, a lot of things. And then how involved were you? It sounds like you were very involved in the shooting. Mm -hmm. How involved afterwards in the post-production? You said that you did some of the editing. Mm -hmm. uh, were you in the editing room working with the directors? In, no, in... no, no. Okay. They, you know, they are, they are all this work. I, I, I did it before and I made sure mm -hmm. that we had uh, the stories we wanted, the way they film, you know, and, and but um, while in the uh, editing room, there were the two of them, and especially Alban, uh, one of them, because he knows exactly uh, what he wants. And uh, I see. But I was I trusted them one hundred percent. So as as the film was being shot, and you were getting an idea of how this was all coming together, when you saw the finished product, when you saw the finished film, were you? What was that experience like for you? moving <laughs> really moving um was it what you had expected yes absolutely okay absolutely wow i will have put a little bit more of joy because lord is a very very joyful place also mm. and you have a glimpse of it of it uh, you know at night when you see the guys uh, singing a little bit yeah. drunk uh, because <laughs> this is lord as well D don't forget that you have so many young people, so many mm. young pe teens, you know, and they give, they, they are not religious, uh, specifically, you know, they don't go, they, I'm not sure they will tell you that they go to mass uh, every week, um, but they give one week of their summer to help uh, disabled and sick people, which is just uh, amazing. And as you can imagine, at night, it can be <laughs> it can be. So I would yeah. maybe have put a little bit more of this, but that's it. I loved that that was included in this because it helped give that kind of a uh, big picture of the, of the human side of all of this. You know yeah. that that yeah. it's it's not like a sort of one dimensional experience, but this yeah. is a. To me, the whole film gave kind of a a foretaste of 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 the kingdom of heaven, of what this means to exactly. be a, a, a church, a part of the, the whole body, you know? Exactly. It was uh, one of the most, uh, you know, in terms of levity, one of the most cheerful parts of the film was seeing these young people uh, being initiated into this, this work. And there's a lot of humor and joy there. It's also some very moving and poignant things, especially at the end when they have to say goodbye to the people. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of fun interactions between the young people and the people they're taking care of. I, I wanted to step back, uh, before the film came out, because you mentioned, the process of getting this accepted by studios and distributors in France, mm -hmm. um, uh, specifically Mars Film and Canal, mm -hmm. Canal Plus, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
So these are these are large uh, distributors or large studios in France. Yes. Now, do they typically are they typically more on the uh, <laughs> the indie on the indie side of things, or on the art film art house no. kind of? No, um, not at all. They have a very uh, a huge catalog of uh, very different things, uh, but first they love the work of Thierry uh, de Maizière and Alban Turley, really, so they trusted them. And, um, and secondly, uh, it was a big surprise. They said yes in one month. I remember we spoke of this idea in September and in October, they said yes, which is wow. just amazing. I don't know who was working behind the scenes. Wow. I don't want to say anything, but <laughs> but but you know it it never happens. I mean, in one month it was done deal, done deal, and you can do whatever you want. But are you sure it's going to be about Lourdes and it's going to be on movie theaters? It's not on TV. And they said yes. And the fact is that uh, it was a huge success, and you know it was done. It, it's very important to, to, to specify that it was not a film for Catholics, not at all. It was, it's a movie for everybody. And maybe especially for non-religious people. Just because, again, it's a film about human condition. It's about poverty, literally and, and, uh, and figuratively, you know. It's about uh, hope, it's about love, it's about uh, giving, it's about... And, and, um, and this is what moved people in France way beyond the Catholic uh, sphere, mm. way beyond. And, and we have been nominated, nominated for the César, uh, you know, which is uh, the French uh, Oscars. Wow, great. It, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. That's very exciting. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, you mentioned all these churches wanting to bring the film to their location, yes. but mm -hmm. there was also a lot of non-Catholics who loved the film then it sounds like. Sure, sure, sure. Because a lot of towns, um, a lot of movie theaters uh, uh, bought the movie. So it was uh, on air almost everywhere in France. But what happened on the side is that, you know, in remote places, uh, uh, in uh, rural France, for instance, they said, hey, but uh, the first movie theater is uh, 50 miles away from uh, my town, so how do I do? So they, um, we, we, we gave them the movie. That's great. What, ha what, it's, um, what happened? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's something higher behind everything that we don't really understand but we really hope that it will touch the american um, public because i think that uh, the story behind that is very universal you know it's about it's about love hope again it's about the time you give it's about paying attention to your neighbor uh, and I think, and especially after the pandemic, we need that. We need something um, yes, a, a I, heart I, to heart, you know? I hope that uh, the experience of the reception of this film in France is repeated here in the United States. And it sounds like yeah. there's reason to hope because there are so many, it seems like the development of this film has been characterized by a kind of miraculousness. And so, uh, so we can continue to pray for that I wanted to go back. I wanted to ask you something about uh, follow up on something that you said earlier mm -hmm. about um, miracles. Yeah. Now, anybody who saw this last uh, uh, review that we did, this little piece on the uh, mm -hmm. previous episode, um, we talked about how to what degree this film is about miracles. And I think that there's an interesting conversation to be said there. Um, but uh, you said that it's very important to understand that the people who are coming here for the most part are not seeking miracles. And I wanted to ask you why you think that's so important to understand why you mentioned that specifically. Because um, when you speak about Lourdes, the first answer you will get is, ah, miracle. But it's not only that. It's, it's, 
it's beyond that. And and mm. the, all the characters, the, the people we filmed, uh, say that. I mean, they are not seeking for a miracle. Not exactly. They know exactly what's going to happen. You know, Jean d'Artigue, the one with the Charcot disease, he knew he died last um, Christmas. Christmas Day. Wow. Mm. Wow. Um, and he knew that he wouldn't be cured. He knew that. So why are you going back to Lourdes year after year? Because it's a heart to heart with the sky. It's, it's, um, it's a place where you can abandon yourself. And I think that it's really the purpose of law more than, a, and you know what, what was funny is that when we started uh, filming Thierry de Maizière, so one of the two directors, every time we, we met someone, he said, okay, um, okay, I understood your story. It's a very sad one, uh, okay, but why do you go to Lourdes? Why? You are, you are looking for a miracle. And people, the answer was always no, no, wow. no, no. It's about abandoning yourself. It's about letting it go, you know? It's about, you know, give everything, your weight, all the things you have that weighs too much in your life to the Virgin. And then you, you come back home um, with a heart filled with joy, love, hope, mm. you know. That's, that's the real purpose of law, I think. I wanted to ask about how this film has affected the people who appeared in it subsequently to its, oh, its release. I love them so much. They are incredible. Um, very positively, very, very positively. And uh, as you can imagine, it was not easy to see your story in a huge screen all over movie theaters. Yeah. But they were really positive, really happy with that. And the beautiful thing, I, I would say that I love the aftermath of this documentary because um, you have all these people, uh, I, I meet, uh, I still meet people saying to me, but I loved it, it touched me so much, etc. But their stories and this group of people, they are just amazing because as I told you before, they never met because we filmed them uh, on different um, time. Um, and I remember after the, the premiere of, uh, uh, in the north of France, um, where Laetitia and Patrick, the parents of the two little boys live, um, I asked the mother, so how do you feel? I'm it wasn't too hard for you. And she said, no, I loved it. I loved it. But you know what? What I really want, the, the one who touched me so much is Isidore, the prostitute. And I said, what? I said, oh, but I was so moved by his story. This guy is incredible, but I want to meet him. You know why? I can't move. I can't leave my town right now because I have Augustin, the little boy. He's struggling. You know, he has a he takes uh, tons of medication, uh, as you can imagine, and so it's she can't she can't leave uh, town. And she told me, please, I had few gifts for him and all the girls uh, from um, the Bois de Boulogne, where they 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 work at night. Uh, and I was like, are you sure? And and two days after, when we have the premiere in Paris, Isidore the prostitute told me so again I, I said okay did you like the movie did you enjoy it you... yes yes I, but you know I, he was funny because he has a very strong Portuguese accent and he said uh -huh. oh no madam, I'm so ugly I don't like myself and he was like that but very funny but he said you know what what I want is to meet the parents of these two little boys and one day, a few months later, I had the mother on the phone and she tell me, 
guess where am I? And I said, I don't know. I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm on the highway and I'm going to meet Isidore in Paris. Wow. So, and we had so many Fioretti's like that. It's just incredible. So, and they asked me to create a WhatsApp group, which I did. So they speak to each other almost every two days, three days. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And when, and you know, um, there is this mother, Lydie, of um, this uh, disabled um, guy, Cédric, who died just two months before mm -hmm. the, the movie. Uh, and as you can imagine, it's very hard for her. The movie was coming out. She just lost her son. It was not very easy. And when I asked her, do you want to be part of this WhatsApp group? And she said a big yes, of course I want wow. to be part of it. And now she's sending prayers, images, pictures, wow. uh, stories, and they are talking all the time. Wow. And it's really so, great. Uh, I, I think I read in maybe in another interview you did that the, the young girl uh, it, it helps her as well, uh, yes, the release of the film. It's fantastic. But this girl who had a condition if, and yeah. she was being bullied a lot in school and things like that. If you could see her now, you wouldn't recognize her. And her wow. father, which is an incredible guy, and, and you know, he found a job right after the... The miracles, they are here for me. Yes. Uh, at the end of the premiere uh, in their town, someone offered two jobs. To, to the father, wow. okay? So now he's working, he's back on track completely, and he keeps saying me, but this, this movie transformed my, my little girl. And in fact, she's, she's going back to school. Um, she was, she's not bullied anymore. And she just had a surgery, you know, to, to lose some weight. And she's just, wow. and she sings and she, she posts videos of her singing all the time on this group. Uh, and she's now, she's doing absolutely fantastic. That's great. Yeah. And yeah. have you been back to Lourdes since the release of this film? And in particular, since uh, it, yes. after this pandemic yes. and the, the no, lockdowns not last year it was closed so we couldn't yes. but right after the the movie yes and i was and i felt like i was a movie star myself because <laughs> <laughs> because all the people and, and the film was still uh, out uh, in lourdes and i remember taking my service in the in the sanctuary bath because it's something i like to do uh it's really absolutely uh, moving and touching to bath you know the people uh, there and i met uh italians volunteer uh, croat volunteer you know people from all over europe uh, even american ones and they said ah but you're the one who made this movie <gasps> but i'm so and i also so i felt like a movie star um so it changed a lot for Lourdes. it was a um a lot of people um uh, right after asked to go there and especially so we they had a lot of um, an increase of volunteers uh, absolutely uh, wow absolutely crazy yeah congratulations on this beautiful piece of work you've done uh we said oh. i think one of the best religious films in in recent years um i really hope it's gonna and... work in the u.s i i would love this movie to meet um its public in the u.s and uh we hope so as well. Um, do you have any other, are you going to work on any other film uh, projects after this? I have many of them um, um, in discussion now, but uh, you know, as I told you, I just finished a novel and uh, which uh, will be published soon. So right. it's a very long process, but yes, I'm, um, this is something I want to do now. I, I, I left all the newspapers and now I want to, Oh, wow. To work a uh, part on my books and um, and the other and the other part on uh, documentaries, but not wow, something that's great. religious. Yeah, that's great. I'd love to. <laughs> um, so uh, your novel will be in French, I assume. Yes, but it will be translated. Good chances. Okay. Good chances that it will be translated. Yeah. Can you tell us so. anything about about that? I'm just curious. What what's it about? Um, it's, it's about a Malian, you know, Mali in Africa. It's about a young Malian who, uh, 
tries to escape poverty um, and it's a journey um, between Africa and he ends in New York City. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Greatest city in the world. <laughs> Greatest city in the world. I miss it. You know, one of the things I, I really miss New York and, and uh, you know, I can show you, I still have my uh, Empire State uh, on, my, ah, uh, nice. on my desk. <laughs> I miss New York a lot. It was a huge part of our, of our life. And uh, among the things I really miss, it's maybe you know it, it's Catholic Underground, you know, by the Franciscan uh, yes. Friars. I've been there a couple yeah. times. Every yeah. month, yeah. That's great. Wow. Yeah, I haven't been there for a while, but it's, but I when I first moved here in 2013, I went a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, they're great. Uh, well, that's that's great. Yeah, uh, we're right here in Harlem, and we just experienced the madness that is the Fourth of July yeah. in New yes. York City with <laughs> fireworks going until four in the morning. <laughs> right, literally, literally right outside. My, I could see it from this window behind really? me on my intersection. Huge fireworks going off at until four in the morning. Yes, same Very at loud. our apartment. We had fireworks going off right really? outside of our window, wow. and we have our our poor son. He's only one year old, um, and it, there are these very loud fireworks launching right next to him. He, must and he only have woke up. He only woke up once, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> amazing. But New York is back, right? New York is really it's back. It's coming back. Oh, That's yeah, right. for it sure. is. Yeah. yeah, we can feel it. Yep. I miss it so much. I love That's your country. I really love your country, and and we had an amazing time. It was a fantastic experience. And my kids well, are more American than me. And I mean, the boys are completely <laughs> Americans now. But uh, yeah, we, we, we owe you a lot. It was a fantastic experience. Well, please Thank get you. in touch if you ever come to visit back in New York City. Absolutely. I will, I will. <laughs> when the pandemic uh, will uh, give me more opportunities. But yeah, usually I come back uh, three or four times uh, every year and my, my my husband has his company still in New York so voilà but thank you Great. so so much for your time and for having me and I'm sorry for my uh, broken English. I would say, excuse no, my French. <laughs> <laughs> totally, we totally understood everything. So, yes. Um, but you know, you can spend the whole day in New York without speaking any word of English. You know that better better than too. me. Yes. So I, I practiced a lot my uh, Spanish, uh, but uh, yes, voila. So. But, um, for everybody listening, thank you for listening to this interview. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, and again, we will put in the description for this episode where people can uh, contact the distributor and and get the uh, either find a theater that's playing the film or uh, arrange a screening of their own. Uh, so thank you, Sixteen. Thank you so much for having me.